So just in case people aren't familiar with Valve, uh, we make games with franchises like Counter-Strike, Dota, Half-Life, and more. Uh, my own background is a writer and developer. I've worked on games like Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, and Portal, and as a project lead on the Left 4 Dead series. Uh, Valve also created Steam, a platform for both consumers and developers. Uh, you know, with over 125 million active users, it's the largest digital PC game store, and now includes games, movies, software, and more. Uh, oh. And what brings me here today is we've also worked on and experimented with virtual reality for years. This was our first, this was one of our headsets, and this is from uh, 2013. Those are two mobile phones, uh, and the panels are being driven by our own circuitry, and at the top uh, left, or our right, is a camera looking out. It's ugly, but it worked. And inside of it, we found the magic that made us realize VR could be real. We found presence. And this, to the best of my knowledge, was the first headset, head-mounted display, HMD, uh, that combined sub-millimeter level tracking and low persistent panels. For that headset to work, we built this room to demo. The tracking used the, cam used the cameras on the HMD and the markers on the wall. You know, with that wallpaper, we, weren't con we were concentrating on the quality of the experience and not the markability. For me, it was just the first time I could put on a virtual reality headset and not get sick within 10 seconds. The Valve uh, room demo, as it became known, became the high bar for virtual reality. We even built additional rooms for other people uh, to, let them ha to help them in VR. So if you've seen a similar room and a similar HMD, you've probably experienced the Valve de room demo. But we didn't stop there. Uh, we kept experimenting and trying uh, different tracking solutions. Our current solution uses lasers. So why lasers? Because for us, we wanted to stand in virtual reality, to move around, to let our bodies be in the scene. When you're sitting, your body knows it's an observer. Stand and you're an active participant. You become part of the scene. So the space required to do it is as simple as just standing or as, as large as five meters across. But for room scale, we need to be able to track that. So we need to be able to track a large volume with that sub-millimeter level of precision. So for us, that was lasers. All right. We announced our partnership with HTC at last GDC, but it was just last December uh, when we shipped the first Vive developer kits out to developers. The kits consisted of what the consumer edition will be as well. It was, then that is a uh, high-resolution HMD, two track controllers that are tracked in the same space as the headset, and two laser base stations to allow full 360 un un uh, occlusion-free room scale tracking. So developers have had that in their hands for just a little less than a year. So this is all new, really new. And this is just the first real jump in VR. We are just the start of the high-end headsets. Change is going to keep happening, you know, it's, as more people enter the market, it's going to really accelerate. But for right now, we're at just the start of the first high-end consumer headsets. So you know, most people try to compare the launch to phones or a new console, but that's not really right. This is more of a jump, more of a leap. This is a more of an unknown. And you can tell me that you understand VR, but if you haven't ever put on a high-end HMD with tracked input, you really haven't experienced it yet. So first, educate yourself. Do the work to see a demo if you haven't already seen one. Uh, we may have some slots available still for tomorrow for our own demos. If you want to see that, just catch me afterwards. Right, and then the first question for investors always is, so what's a realistic adoption curve? With, with technology that's this new, this different, well, I have a secret. I have a, I'm going to share a secret with you today. Looking around the internet and seeing how everyone's predicting and the different predictions that are being made, I found the algorithm that they've all been using. Here it is. So you go ahead, plug in a number, and get your, own, get your own number, and then you could go promote that. So joking aside, it's all really new, and it's all really unknown. So to help combat the unknown, we really need to work together. So this isn't about competition. This isn't about one company or one person. This is about all of us, all of us working together so that all of us succeed. And this isn't a traditional council launch. We don't need to pull out that dusty playbook and repeat it. For instance, we created OpenVR. Why? So that when you write to the Vive, you're also writing to all the other leading uh, head-mounted displays. We do this because after years of running Steam, we learned for developers to succeed, they need to publish everywhere and work on every piece of hardware they can. We all need to help developers mitigate the risk this year. 
To that end, for our content team, we also work with other developers. From giving feedback on projects to having developers come stay with us for weeks, working in our offices alongside of us, so we can all learn together. Because we're all learning on this together. You know, I see this in the community as well. It's, it's really great. Everyone's sharing what they're learning. It's a really great atmosphere. So please, don't treat each other like competition. When you do that, you make all kinds of poor decisions. We need to work together and share because the rules to creating VR are being written and broken every day. This is why if you're investing in developers, it isn't about the design document or the whiteboard pitch. Developers need to embrace the technology. The minute they get their hands on a new piece of tech, they should explore it. They should change their ideas. This does not happen when somebody forces them down a path of rigid, defined goals. No one is an expert yet. For ourselves, we thought we knew VR back in 2013, but in 2014, we added the track controllers. It changed everything. To be able to reach into the world, to have agency. It wasn't just an addition, it was a multiplier that even, even caught us off guard. You know, all of a sudden, you're moving UI pieces from elements in the world to being able to just have them be motions that players were making. You know, our input was no longer an abstraction. Instead, it was a one-to-one -one movement. Ah. All right. And developers, this applies to you as well. Start with an idea, but don't start with a 30-page document. Let yourself be wrong. Let yourself experiment. Let yourself fail. You know, one of the things is every idea is a good idea to start as long as you're adaptable. And so remember that. A really good way to start is with game jams. Um, you know, they, they free you up from the being precious with the process and with your ideas. We're seeing not just indies embrace game jams, but also uh, large companies. Some of the best stuff that we're seeing these days comes from people who first embrace the technology, find an idea, and then run with it. Ah. I mean, if that sounds scary as an investor or developer, it's actually a lot less than you think. I mean, not to blow this event out of the water, but if you want to find talent, don't listen to pitches. Go to a game jam, see who's behaving smart. Look to see who's embracing technology, who's looking past what they already know, and finding out what they're going to know. Go up to one of those groups, ask them questions, see how they behave, test them, invest in smart people. When you find them, embrace their early failures. Find out what is new with them. You need to give developers room to experiment, experiment to fail, to find the right thing. And you have to try the experience yourself. The experiences of VR are emotional, not clinical, right? You giggle, you laugh, you leaf back, it's real. You can't understand these experiences by looking at a whiteboard or watching a video. And then be critical. Don't accept, don't accept something lesser. Rule number one, it can't get you nauseous. OK, those days are over. There's a wealth and a variety of applications out there now that don't get you, that don't get you sick. It just takes work. It's not a limiter. And the idea of VR legs is broken. You don't ask people to get used to getting sick. You make applications that don't get them sick. And the odd thing done right, VR is actually less likely to get you sick than traditional 2D games. And as we all become cheerleaders for VR, it often seems like we can't be critical. But that's exactly what we need right now. Yeah. All right, sorry. And don't just say you like something or believe in something because everyone else is, is saying that. You know, a company just got $10 million, so whatever they were doing must be great. You know, we have a bad case of emperor's new clothes going on in the industry. If you don't like something, just don't continue at it because other people like it. Have the experience, try it, play it. And we found, so when we were making our demo loop for GDC, the demo loop's comprised of a bunch of individual experiences all put together. Um, oddly enough, you have to do that as a group because everybody has a different one that they're going to champion. And at the end of the day, the people experiencing it each pick something different as their favorite. So paradoxically, uh, you need to not trust just your own opinion, but also make sure that you're verifying it with other people. You want to play test, you want to discuss, and you want to discuss that experience together. Because bad VR can sink us all, not just the kind that gets you sick. So there's a picture on Twitter of an ad uh, for a mobile phone company and game company, and it was 10% developers, 90% marketing. They're not here to defend themselves, so I'm not going to put up that ad. But uh, instead, here's pictures of my cats. Um, but we all know that can happen to an industry, right? And I don't get me wrong, we need marketers in business, but the easiest way to help them isn't to make their role bigger, but to make the content better, to invest in developers. We need to respect the users by embracing the technology 
and giving users something to sink their teeth into. Your bad VR can affect if somebody else wants to try my VR. So don't be scared to ask developers to be better. And you do that by, by trying what they create. Don't just watch a build video. You have to actually play it. You know, like sound makes a really big impact, or so does haptics, where we have a demo where you're pulling back a bow and an arrow. And it's just you're just pulling two controllers away from each other, but haptics gives you that feeling of the bow. Like, you, so you have to experience it. You can't just look at videos. And at Valve, we've been working on high-end VR maybe longer than anyone. But there's a problem that this is all so new, so different, that I can give you a list of rules for what we've done, um, what worked for us. But I can't give you a list of rules of what we haven't done, what everyone's going to be doing in the future. So that's, all, that's up to all of us creating experiences today. So this is my takeaway. We all need to work together to experiment, to try things, to learn, to teach, to help each other, so that we all exceed in virtual reality goes mainstream, because it's about to happen. And that's it. Thank you.